Skyward Sword is one of the most ambitious Zelda games to date when it comes to the story and the lore that it provides as being the first game within the chronology. And with the release of Skyward Sword HD, people are realizing once again that the significant amount of lore can go a very long way considering the connections to Breath of the Wild and the upcoming sequel. With that being said, I've put together a video of 5 awesome Skyward Sword theories that I feel you should definitely check out. For the sake of the video, I'm going to be reductive when it comes to these theories and give you the gist. If you want fleshed out videos on these theories, let me know in the comment section below. Alright guys, this is HMK with 5 Skyward Sword Zelda theories. Let's dive right into the noise. This theory states that the ancient cistern in the Faron region was actually built over the area where Demise and his horde of demons crept out of the earth. Below, on the bottom area of the dungeon, you see a dark, evil-like area filled with cursed, undead bacoblins and demonic-looking structures in the walls. This area is thought to be the closest you can physically come to to the underworld, considering that cursed bacoblins drop evil crystals, which are literally pure crystallized malice, and that they fear the shield that would go on to become the goddess shield. It adds more to the claim. The idea is that Demise, as seen as the Imprison, broke out in a force-like area that could be considered Pharon near Lake Floria, but didn't get very far since he was sealed around the sacred grounds. Due to the era becoming a breeding ground for malice and evil since it's a path to the underworld, it was decided in ancient times to build the cistern there and adorn it with holy and blessed relics being based on real world aesthetics of Buddha in hopes of purifying or at least limiting the demonic area beneath. As Demise came from the underworld, it is heavily suspected that this underworld can be the same as Lorul from A Link Between Worlds considering it's the dark counterpart aesthetic compared to that of Hyrule, and the fact that it's also called Low Rule lends to this theory. It is believed that Demise could have been a dark envoy and hero to a Low Rule, so much so that he was Hylaeus, counterpart's chosen hero, sent to take the Triforce from Hyrule. That also gives the idea that their Triforce in Low Rule was actually destroyed very long ago. This is backed by the upside down Triforce symbol on Demise's sword and Yuga's obsession with Ganon, who indeed is the product of Demise's curse. Pretty simple, but it goes a long way. You know them time shift stones? Yeah, those pieces of ore that are able to turn back the clock in localized areas and lead to some of the best puzzle designs in Zelda? Yeah, so these stones are blue in color and are located near the original Temple of Time and have time manipulating properties. It is theorized that the Ocarina of Time is actually made from the last of these stones, allowing the instrument to be used to travel through time. Now this theory is quite the rabbit hole, so keep up. Although Skyward Sword is the first in the series that is The Legend of Zelda, because you know, it starts The Legend of Zelda with the first Zelda. There's actually a ton of clues that tells the stories of a long history on the surface before Skyward Sword, specifically in Laneru. The theory states that it was the city of the future yesterday. This elaborated that the people of Laneru was able to build their technological marvels thanks to being able to glimpse into the future. This would explain why the original Temple of Time was adorned with the royal family crest long before the existence of Hyrule and the original Gate of Time's location. This will also lead to the theory that Halea was specifically a warden deity to Nehru due to their matching blue aesthetic and that Zelda throughout the ages would be associated with the Triforce of Wisdom. Go as far as cementing Halea as the Goddess of Time that was referenced in Majora's Mask thanks to her message of speaking to the hero from the edge of time. This will also put Hylaeus status as the goddess of time against Demise who she battled long ago, as Demise is being described as the being who conquered time itself. This all boils down to Hylaea originally being specifically from Laneru, but was chosen among the warden gods as being the follower of the goddess of wisdom as someone with the wisest sense to guard the entire Triforce. A theory I proposed some years ago. The long and short of it states that the events of Skyward Sword are indeed part of a bootstrap paradox in which a link of this game was always the first hero mentioned in the legends of the goddess and her chosen knight, 
since Zelda herself turned out to be Halea and Link traveling to the past and present in order to defeat Demise in both times, that would be the events told in the legends matching up and being the events that you actually go through in the game. All the way down to Zelda blessing Link with her sailcloth, which indeed was always the same sailcloth of legend. Confused? Don't worry, it's okay. And there we have it, 5 Skyward Sword Zelda theories that I felt should blow your mind and get you hyped up for the prospect of Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild 2, and the entirety of the Legend of Zelda series. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, favorite, and most importantly subscribe to HMK. And let me know in the comments if you want another video like this and if you want more videos of these theories fleshed out. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters for help making this video happen. If you want to support HMK for just a dollar a month, check out my Patreon info in the description box below. Alright guys, until the next Zelda video, this has been HMK, and I'll check you guys later.